Hello, we're here today at the Van Loon Museum with Tonko Griever, who is the assistant curator here. Uh, Tonko, could you tell me a little about the history of this beautiful house? Uh, the house itself was built in the 17th century. Um, the first people, person who lived here uh, was Ferdinand Bol. Uh, he was a very successful uh, pupil of Rembrandt. Uh, so he could afford to live in a large uh, house on the uh, newer areas uh, of the city in that in his time. Uh, but the house itself, the interiors, are all in the 18th century, uh, Rococo uh, and later on to the neoclassicism uh, style. And um, But it's a very good example of a large uh, double, as we call it here in Holland, uh, canal house. And um, it's a good survived example of this very nice uh, uh, furniture still in, I mean, the built-in furniture with the chimney pieces. And it gives you a good impression of the house uh, if you see uh, the house itself. And uh, we've got a long list of important uh, uh, people who lived in here, uh, but it's very, very glad that Ferdinand Bol uh, was the first person uh, who lived here in the house. And you know uh, Fernand Bo was living here uh, because he was renting the house uh, with a coach house, uh, which is the back of the garden. Uh, but when he rented the place, the coach house was not finished yet. So he put, put a lawsuit against the owner of the house because he was renting the place. And of course, as a good Dutchman, because he wanted to have a lower rent. And uh, that's also the reason that we know the architect of the house, which was uh, Adrian Dorsman. Uh, which is, was, I think it's a house is actually in the complete chain of uh, architecture, the outside of the house. Uh, it's, uh, it's an important piece in the development uh, from the early uh, kennel house style to a more severe style, which, which became uh, popular at the end of the 17th century. But from the inside, as we found out during the restorations of the house, it's told that there are no traces uh, from the 17th century. It's all in 18th century uh, from the inside of the house. And it's uh, to, to, to make it, uh, I think, um, to, to say, um, especially in the staircase, uh, that's the most spectacular thing uh, of the house because the rooms itself are, you can find them otherwise, but the staircase of the house is the most spectacular thing and that is due uh, to Mr. Van Hagen. Mr. Van Hagen, he was a mid 18th century owner of the house and he made, he, he, I think he totally took away the interior of the house and renovated the place in the 18th century style and he totally renewed the staircase and I think it's the most spectacular staircase in Amsterdam Kennel Site Mansion. Um, in all the houses like this you have stories about the owners and in this house the story goes this Mr. Van Loon discovered and found out uh, suddenly uh, that Mr. Van Hagen has written his name into the balustrade. Um, if you look carefully then you can discover them because it's very difficult to see. If you see one letter then you can make the name out of it and if you don't see anything then you, you can't forget it to see the name of Mr. Van Hagen and also the name of his wife, uh, Trip. Uh, the house is very f restored in the uh, 60s. Um, to, I mean, of course, there were many additions made in the 19th century and they all have been removed uh, during the restoration uh, to, to give a good expression, uh, impression of an 18th century house. And I think it's well done and still I think it's considered as a good, uh, good restoration uh, to the house. Now you mentioned to me that uh, th this was really a museum that included uh, the history of a house and the history of a family. Now what is the family? Uh, I think the history of the, the family of the house, I mean it's called the Van Loon Museum, um, Van Loon House people call it. Uh, it's also the history, I mean the interior and the, the things that are in the house are all from the Van Loon family. Um, the Van Loon family bought this house in 1883 uh, so that's say more than a century ago, um, but they're really the, the 
family who turned this house into a museum and are their belongings and their ancestral things and heritage you can see in the house and which are the most spectacular thing they owned is a very large collection of family portraits which is I think one of the largest and one of the most impressive uh, collections here in Holland available. Um, we have of all relatives we have at least a, a portrait um, and a f few of them or some of them we also have more portraits so you can see them growing older and becoming old and bold and, and grey um, which is nice to see we can really explain the family history um, to, to sh point out what paintings you can show people this is the father from that's the brother the mother uh, you can see the grandson you can see um, who the grandson is married to and because most of the Amsterdam families are quite close to related, you can see also the history of Amsterdam. People who were traders in the 17th century, um, Eastern with the East, and with our colonies, and uh, becoming rich. And in the 18th century, they were ruling the city and they were in the local government. So you can really see also the history of Amsterdam. A lot of people you can store, tell the stories about the history of Amsterdam and the events who were taking place, uh, political events, economical events. And you can point out by showing and pointing out the, the relatives and the story of the, of the people uh, behind the portraits. And for the rest, the house is, is dec decorated uh, with the family furniture, uh, porcelain, uh, silver, uh, which is uh, partly, especially was owned in this house, was here, and also a lot of things are, are coming uh, from from all our relatives of the family, uh, that's the reason why is that the family is quite small uh, at the moment. Um, there's just one van loan uh, left, so um, a lot of family relatives gave furniture uh, to the last Mr. van loan to to be here to be preserved uh, in this this house. Um, so that's I think also one of the reasons that the family turned the house. Uh, into the muse into a museum. I think there actually were two reasons. One reason was to to uh, to open the house for the public. Uh, the museum was opened in 1973. It was a time that uh, most of the canal houses uh, were turned into offices. There were less and less houses who were occupied as uh, a living living house. Uh, most of them were were closed for the public. So. Uh, Mr. Van Loon wanted to to make sure that also f people in the future would be able to see uh, a house like this and how life is in a house like this. And um, of course, nowadays it turned into another direction. I mean, most of the offices are turned into houses at the moment. Uh, but uh, I think in his age, 1960, 1973, uh, when the museum was opened, um, there were less and less houses occupied by people. They were all offices. So that was one of the reasons he opened it. And the other reason was to keep uh, together the collection. Because in Holland, uh, because of our inheritance system, uh, most of the collections are split up. And they're split up any further in the future. And I think the only reason, of the only way to, um, to keep them together here in Holland is to turn things into a foundation then you make sure that they will be kept together also in the future. Um, and because that's the thing that makes family portraits interesting, if you have the combination, if you have them all, then you can make, then you can tell the story of the family. And if you have just one uh, painting, that's less interesting. And if you, then you have them all. I mean, then you can explain things, you can tell stories. And if you don't have them together, uh, they have less meaning. Then. What uh, is the origin of the wealth of the Van Loon family? In the beginning, because they were trading, I mean, they were coming from the south of Holland, where they had a water mill in the medieval times. You can still see that sign also in their family coat of arms. Three crosses are standing from a water mill they possessed in the medieval times. But then they went to Rotterdam, where they were uh, fishermen, they had fishing ships. Um, and from the fishing ships, I think Holland turned into um, a marine uh, nation. Uh, the fishing ships went go on, were trading, um, trading further and further. 
and then I think we got in conflict with 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 the Spanish and with the English, um, and uh, but we were very good in it, and we were uh, and one of the reasons we were becoming good in it that we were uh, the government uh, found into a company uh, for trading, and that company uh, was led by seventeen uh, uh, persons. I mean, every city had its own um, department and Rotterdam had a department and the Rotterdam department was founded by Van Loon and but the Lo Van Loons were clever enough to think that Rotterdam would become less important than Amsterdam so they moved to Amsterdam and also here they were in the head of the department of that company our eastern trading company and because there were ships tradings there were ship insurance months they did uh, but also trading, trading itself, and he had stocks in the trading company. And I think that was the origin of the wealth of the family. And then, because they became wealthy, they did several good marriages into to all the families in Amsterdam and other families, to um, to get also power and to 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 keep a powerful thing. Then you have needs powerful contacts to 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 keep powerful. And uh, their coat of arms changed at some point, uh, reflecting this uh, new shipping thing, huh? From the water mills? Um, yes, I mean, the coat of arms is now different looking than it from in the past. Um, I think it first appeared around 1610, 1620, that they added two uh, black hats into their coat of arms. So it's... A lot of people are very shocked if they see the first time they see the family coat of arms. Uh, they think immediately of slave trade. Um, it's a thing I supposed to, to, to be ashamed of, it would be if it, if it would be. Um, so the Fanlon family spent some investigation into the history of their coat of arms. Um, and they found out that um, they were never in slave trade because the slave trade was uh, based uh, to the west and they were trading with the east and the eastern trading company had nothing to do with the slave trade um, but there were uh, black persons in Holland uh, at the time in the 17th century um, they were there and they were a symbol of status and uh, they were standing at the back of the coach when the family was uh, uh, going out and I think that's also the reason why they added it to the family coat of arms as a symbol of status and um, we hopefully that's the reason that they did it. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, I think you have a problem. <laughs> and so there, the furnishings that <coughs> excuse me, the furnishings that we find around the um, the house here are basically from the Van Loon family. Uh, I would say um, h half of it is is from the Van Loon uh, family originally, from the Van Loon family. Uh, but you are co also collected in this century collected furniture. I think that's the rest of the furniture which is uh, displayed uh, over here. So it's partly originally from this house and other things are bought for the house and also bought uh, when it was turned into a museum. I mean, new things were added. Um, if you're going to redecorate a, a house, you can imagine yourself then you willing to buy other things because you have new ideas and you want to change. and. Uh, so, uh, but let's say, I think it's, the furniture you can best describe is it's the family choice. I mean, we as a museum don't make choices in the furniture. It's still, it's the family who makes the choices in, in what kind of furniture is standing here. And they bring in furniture and also sometimes they buy furniture uh, in their opinion and in their taste. So we, I think you can still say um, that's the Van Loon furniture which is displayed over here. Now you have a, a special show upstairs right now. Uh, is this something that you often have here or is this a rare thing? And what is the show? Um, the, I think nowadays uh, as a museum, I think it's one of the function of a museum is to, to also to uh, change things and let things, other things show to the public. Um, we don't have that often uh, exhibitions. Um, it's not the function of our museum. Our main function is to, to preserve the house in the condition it is as now and maybe to improve the condition. Um, exhibition is not our main aim. We're not, uh, not an exhibition hall. To, we don't need to have an exhibition. 
Um, but this exhibition, we, at the moment we have an exhibition which was a very rare opportunity. At the moment we have a collection of nearly 70 uh, sculptures by uh, Gian Bologna. It's a private collection uh, from the America, from Michael Hall. And um, it are also sculptures who were really uh, very fitting. Uh, they were always has been uh, sculptures for private collectors. And that means it's very, very good for our museum. It's very well fitting into a museum because we are really a private museum. We, have, we try to show a private surrounding. And in that surrounding, I think um, the sculptures are very, very well fitting. And so we're very glad to have it at this moment, at this particular time, uh, because at the Rijks Museum is a very large exhibition of Adrian de Vries and Gian Bologna, um, Italian, I mean, he was coming from the north, northern part of Europe, um, but he went to Italy, and um, there Adrian de Vries uh, was partly educated as his uh, workshop, so it's a very good combination to have the large Adrian de Vries sculptures in a large museum, as the Rex Museum is, and to have these, this collection of Gian Bologna uh, sculptures, which are a very private atmosphere. I mean, there were people, they look as if you have them on, want to have them on your own desk, and they're very well fitting over here in this intimate uh, uh, period rooms we have here. Now, um, when can the people come out to this museum, and are you open every day? Uh, during the exhibition, which runs to uh, the 14th of March, uh, we're open all day, uh, from 10 uh, till 5. Um, people can enter from between 10 and, and 7. People can, uh, and 10 and 5, people can uh, walk around themselves and enjoy the, the, the private atmosphere of our museum. So there's no obligated tour people have to take. They can just enjoy and, and take their time or do it as quick as they want to. Uh. Okay, Tonko, thank you very much. Uh, it's 